There's been a steady increase in short term rentals like Airbnb, VRBO, but what would you do if one popped up right next to your house? Mm -hmm. That's a different way to think about it. KSHB 41 reporter Abby Dodge goes 360 on the growing short term rental market in Kansas City. She's looking at all angles of this so you can decide for yourself. We're going 360, talking to short term rental owners, realtors, neighbors of short term rentals, people staying in them and cities that have adopted ordinances related to rentals. Yeah, just the homey feeling, I guess, is what we were like. In their rental, nestled in the West Plaza neighborhood, Kathy and Ruthie are just two of the 103.7 million people worldwide who booked an Airbnb in the second quarter of 2020. They're drawn to spacious homes with room to enjoy each other's company. To be able to prepare our own dinner, drink our own wine, sit outside in a private space, same with breakfast and this kind of thing, just being able to walk and explore a new neighborhood. As they stroll past signs, declaring them unwanted. I like it for me as a renter, but <laughs> if I was the neighbor, I can understand. Come on in, you guys. Tiffany Watts owns and operates a few Airbnb properties in Kansas City. So our guests really love our coffee bar. So we have tea, we have coffee, your hot chocolate. We've got cider over here. And the temporary home she creates for them during their stays. So this is our main bedroom. Curating a life with properties in her portfolio once seemed like an impossible task to outsiders. As a black woman in Kansas City, like people looked at me and they assumed like, yo, you're a single mom. Yeah, you're going to struggle like it's you're fine. I don't want that. I want I don't want people to look at me like that and I don't want people to look at my daughter like that. You know, I, I want to give her something amazing. Airbnb hosts in the metro earn an average of two thousand six hundred dollars a month. That's before taxes and hosting expenses. Watts says this has been her ticket to financial freedom. All these guys are homeowners here. Next to Laura Burkhalter's Southmoreland home. She's been a resident of the neighborhood for more than 20 years, now president of the neighborhood council. We've done a great job of trying to connect neighbors with neighbors and that's why the short term rental thing is such a bugaboo with me because we can't connect them if nobody's there. In Columbus Park, Aaron Royal's top concern is safety. These different folks coming in and out, random intervals, you know, when the parties happen, you know, really don't know who those people are. People trying to tailgate into the building after you, you know, it really doesn't make you feel safe. She lives in a multifamily building closer to the noise of neighbors constantly on vacation. She'd love to have a home of her own, but rising costs and rates are keeping her here. It's a little bit like overwhelming and discouraging at the same time because it kind of feels like you can't compete. Short-term rentals were around, but they weren't all the buzz they are nowadays. Sites like Airbnb and VRBO continue to grow. Typical stay is about three days. Realtors like Stephen May help buy and sell those self-sufficient properties. It's a little bit different where, you know, we're truly buying and selling businesses, quote unquote, versus just properties that are vacant potentially. Those businesses have the potential to generate double the home's monthly mortgage. Those are, you know, one of the best pros, I would say, of doing Airbnb in some of these neighborhoods is it truly helps the neighborhood's, you know, appraisal value and what the house is worth, creating equity for everybody. The push to change rules surrounding short-term rentals like Airbnb after a deadly shooting. Cities are staking claim on this issue, too. After someone shot and killed a mother of eight at a short-term rental party in Overland Park earlier this year. I know we talked about a variety of options we could take in regard to short-term rentals. The city council asked the board to audit rentals and come up with a solution. The first step is a nuisance party ordinance passed last month. We're not at a spot yet where we're actually implementing that. We're going to do some education before our police officers are just handing out tickets like candy. The city can find property owners and party goers for violating the ordinance. Overland Park is looking into additional options like licensing rental properties. We have to get a better sense of where they are and what's happening in them before we can decide what would be effective for Overland Park. Balancing the discomfort of a revolving door of neighbors with the feelings of home for visitors to our area is like sharing a bathroom with your siblings. Necessary, but not always wanted. When you leave home, there's a piece of your heart there. In Kansas City, Abby Dodge, KSHB 41 News. All right, what do you think about that? What do you think about this or any other topic you'd like us to go 360 on? You can email us at 
360 at KSHB.com.